That guy called Finn Balor, eh? he's a pretty good pro wrestler. He absolutely smashed it in Japan, then he came over to NXT, basically owned that division from start to finish, and his WWE run hasn't been that bad. I mean, the guy has been world champion. We can't just take a dump over the whole thing, and that is a disgusting thing for me. Simon Miller here at What Culture to say. However, with all that said, a lot of people don't actually think that WWE are treating Finn Balor very well, and they also think that WWE refuses to pull the trigger. And these people may be right. Why? Here's why. Let's get right into the thick of it and focus on the problem, the very aspect where these individuals started to get mad to begin with. The rumour was for a long, long time at the Royal Rumble this year, in 2018, the year of, I don't know, fish, I don't know if that's right or not, just came out of my mouth. But in this year, at the Royal Rumble, it would indeed be Finn Balor taking on the beast Brock Lesnar. And that didn't happen, and instead we got Lesnar versus a couple of monsters, and that was all right, but it's not what a lot of wrestling fans wanted to see. Leading up to this moment as well, well, things were pretty bad too, because Kane, he came back and he just whipped Balor's ass, and Balor never even got to exact his revenge, even though this all started happening just 24 hours after Finn Balor had beaten AJ Styles at the TLC pay-per-view, so really, none of it made any sense. It was like a Rubik's Cube if you're colorblind. Now, none of us know the exact reason why this happened, and the fallout from it all did see Finn Balor re-team up with Gallows and Anderson to form the Balor Club, that's actually quite a nice balance. However, then a leaked WrestleMania card came out, and guess whose name was completely absent from that list? You've guessed it, it's Repo Man. No, it's not, it's Finn Balor. And once more, the internet world got mad because they're like, are you telling me that Finn Balor isn't even pegged for some kind of good match at this year's WrestleMania? What kind of universe are we living in? So what is the deal? Because at one point, Balor was definitely destined for big things. I mean, he did away with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, on his journey to become the first ever Universal Champion. However, then he got injured, and maybe that's where the problems did indeed start. Now, WWE clearly had a thing for Balor at one point, especially when we go back to his NXT days. He was imperative and he was important, and he was the face that ran that place for ages. Without him, that era of NXT simply wouldn't have been as good. And he carried that momentum onto the main roster, but yes, then he did get injured, and that's where everything changed. I mean, let's face it, the main thing he's kind of done ever since he came back was that awful feud with Bray Wyatt when Bray Wyatt dressed up like a woman. It was a low light and not something you want to be associating with someone like Finn Balor. Or Bray Wyatt for that matter, that's a different video for a different day. And sure, I can understand that logic to some degree. You don't want to put all your hopes, dreams and wishes on someone that you think is going to be injury prone. You can't do anything with a guy or a girl that's on the injury shelf. They're not there, they're away, so you don't make them world champion because you're going to be like, well, if I do that, all my plans are going to go up in smoke when you go and stub your toe. But that's not the case, is it? It's like he's been injured all the time and more or less since he's come back, I'm sure aside from a few aches and pains, he's been pretty consistent. And if that is your worry, you can't just worry about the same thing every day. You can't let assumptions rule your life, because where's that gonna get you? If that's the case, don't even get out of bed, because maybe aliens are gonna come down today and they're gonna blast us all away with their laser guns. That's an assumption, and nobody knows it's true. And after that, it's gotta come down to however Vince McMahon does indeed see Finn Balor. I mean, he's not the biggest guy in the world, even though he is ripped to shreds. And when it comes to pro mobility, I don't think you'd put him in the top tier of that. I mean, he's okay, but he's not great. But if we're just gonna tick the same boxes over and over again, once again, what is the point? Why don't we look at Finn Balor, take all his upsides, and try and make them work even more than they are working? Because let's face it, he's a baby face that people actually like. And as I've said a thousand times on my What Culture video, a baby face that people actually like is such a novelty in 2018, we should grab these people and just shake them around until they are the life and soul of the whole company. I mean, how nice was it to see Shinsuke Nakamura win the Royal Rumble? It was lovely. It wasn't some guy that the fans rolled their eyes out like, oh, not this dude, it was like, sweet, Nakamura won, and they felt good, and I felt good, and Nakamura felt good. That's what wrestling's meant to do. And Finn Balor fits into that category as well. For me, sometimes, I kind of feel like I relate to him a bit. He just feels like a fan that busted his ass, used the talent he had to get to the top, and now he's on the biggest stage of them all. It makes me want to root for him, and it makes me want to see him win. But that's not what happens. And if somebody was to come up to me in the street and put a gun to my head and say, listen, Simon Miller, you have to give me your true opinion of what you think WWE thinks of Finn Balor, 
My first reaction would be confusion. They could have asked me that without the gun, without putting my life in danger, and I would have still given them an honest answer, so the weapon was unnecessary. Anyway, in this scenario, I would indeed say that I believe WWE simply sees Finn Balor as an upper mid-carder who maybe sometimes can jump into the main event as and when they need him. And on one hand, that makes sense given everything we've just said. That's not a bad spot. It's a pretty decent spot if you ask me. Right now, if some magical man came to me and said, Simon, you want to be an upper mid-carder in WWE? I'd say, absolutely. That sounds like a swell life. But in a company where Roman Reigns keeps getting booed, Brock Lesnar is kind of an entity onto himself, and Seth Rollins feels like he's in the exact same position that Balor is, why don't we take a chance on the Demon King? And it may work, but it may not work, but at least throw caution to the wind and get the evidence for yourself rather than just guess and say, well, we don't know, so let's not take a chance. And it all ties into the long fueled problem of WWE not raising people when they need to be raised. So if you think Finn Balor needs a mouthpiece, give him a mouthpiece. If you think he needs backup, We've already done that, because he's now got Gallows and Anderson. But if you can see a way to get him into the position that you want him to be in, then do it. Don't just allow him to tread water, because wrestlers that tread water eventually lose all their momentum, and you know who they become? This is no offense, they become Dolph Ziggler. And I say all this too, and I'm not even the biggest fan of the demon gimmick. I think it's okay, but it doesn't overly excite me, but it damn well sure does overly excite other people, so that's another tool in his arsenal. Don't just use it as a novel thing. Turn it into this majestic wonder that people just have to tune in to see. And yeah, I don't think that WWE has used that in the right way up to this point, but as we know, all it ever takes is a few weeks of good storytelling and actually reminding us that it should be deemed as important and more or less it starts to become important. Well, the exception to that, of course, is dressing Bray Wyatt up in drag. That is the exception. Either way, I don't think that as of right now, WWE does have any good intentions of actually pulling the trigger on Finn Balor. And in a way, that could be a shame. And it does seem like madness, especially when we do look at the Rumble main event in retrospect. I mean, that match between Lesnar, Kane and Strowman was okay. They didn't really do anything. Here we sit a couple of weeks removed and the wrestling landscape hasn't changed. We could have easily put Balor in there and maybe just had a really good match between the two. And that would have been at least more fun. Also, WWE, you do know that it was you that booked Balor so badly leading up to that, which is why you changed your mind. You do know you control that. Or maybe you don't. And if you don't know, listen to me right now. You're in control. You can do whatever you want. This could all change after Mania because Roman Reigns is going to need opponents. There's already a ready-made story there if you go back in time and look at Finn Balor's journey. But I don't know if this is going to happen. And there's only one way to find out. However, if you want to be on the game, you've got to be on the bench. And at least Balor right now is there. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about Finn Balor. Like, share, and subscribe. Do the Miller jig. Then head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles and go on Twitter if you do indeed have a Twitter account and follow What Culture at What Culture WWE. My name is Simon Miller. This was What Culture and this was the Y series. And whatever day you're watching this on, put a smile on your face, walk outside, and just shout at the top of the lungs, I love you, world. Somebody may try and arrest you, give them a hug, give them a kiss, they'll let you go. And I bet all of you have a much better time. Right now. Mackenzie puts away Priestley. Well, the Defiant Women's Division, clearly one of the hottest women's divisions on the planet. Billy Wood calling the shots on chin reaction. That's huge news. Five on five. Five IPW guys will fake five Defiant guys. Shoe, bring whoever you want, mate, because IPW are ready.